Hello everybody and welcome to the introduction to Confluence Trading Part 1. I'm very excited to be bringing this course to you guys. Uh, I've been putting out a lot of content recently on YouTube, Twitter, etc. And I use a very similar method for pretty much all of my technical analysis. Of course, like everybody, it evolves over time and I always try to increase my edge over the market. However, I wanted to make this course so that I could introduce a structured method of looking at any chart, any asset whatsoever, and creating a plan of areas of interest, those areas of confluence that we may be interested in participating in the market. So this really takes a lot of the uh, mystical aspects out of trading. I know a lot of people, they, you know, just like myself, started off trading by looking at Twitter, seeing all of these crazy charts, these lines, these indicators, these ideas, these people putting out statements with certainty, prices going here, prices going there. And you're thinking, how do they know these things? Or how do they even learn these things? Well, we're going to demystify the charts. We're going to figure out how to look at them and really understand the context and where we'd be interested in participating in the market. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. First of all, the background. So this is an introductory course. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the videos relatively to the point, not go off on too many tangents. Of course, we're going to be introducing a lot of concepts here and a lot of tools. And all of these concepts and tools can be courses in their own right. Absolutely, every single one of them could be a lengthy course. So if any of them really captures your imagination, please put the time and the effort in to go and learn about it. There's almost infinite resources out there free of charge. Of course, there are paid courses. Just find something that works for you. Talk to people, find out what's worked for them. In the Mindjack Discord, everybody's learned from different sources. So you'll be able to get recommendations there if you want to. On the screen here, I've put some of the main sources and inspiration from my technical analysis, which you can read through. Of course, as I said, um, it is impossible for me to really mention everybody, but I do appreciate everyone who's been a part of my trading journey so far. So before we get started, let's have a look at what is Confluence Trading. So we have a quote up on the screen from Investopedia.com. I'm just going to read it out. This term can be used when employing technical analysis by looking at charts with multiple indicators or overlays and developing levels where different indicators are combined to help identify possible opportunities. So in short, the way that I use it is we're using various technical analysis tools to understand the context on the chart. And we're trying to find where multiple levels of interest line up. And then that gives us an area of what we call confluence. That when, the, when and if and when the price approaches that level on the chart, we are potentially interested in participating in the market. So this is a process I've been through and I think Every trader really goes through this process when they're learning technical analysis because we learn one tool, we say, okay, this works, that makes sense, but it's not all the information I need, right? So we add another tool and we add another tool and we add another tool and they all make sense. They all give us information that we can use. However, we end up with this Jackson Pollock chart that looks like someone's just drawn all over it. I don't know how we're supposed to make sense of this. So instead of the chart looking like that, we end up with a chart that looks like this. So we have a very, very clean chart to work from. And like your mom said, or at least mine did, tidy room or tidy desk, tidy mind. Sounds like bullshit when you're a kid, but in my experience, it's very true. You want to keep things as tidy as possible. So we, we end up with this instead of this. So these two charts actually are exactly the same technical analysis. Every tool that I've used on both charts is the same. The first chart is only the areas that I'm interested in participating in the market. And the second chart is all of the technical analysis, which I draw those areas of confluence from. So important to remember, you don't always have to be participating in the market. This is really, really key. I want to hammer it home. As traders, the luxury that we have, because we have a lot of stress, right? Is, trading isn't all, all fun and games. But the luxury that we're given is that we don't have to always participate in the market. We decide when we want to get in, we hope based on a plan that we're going to extract extract capital from the market and we're going to get out of the market again. This is trading. This is very different from investing, dollar cost averaging, etc. We're talking about trading. Get in, extract capital and get out. So don't give up your power to choose. All of us really that got into trading have done so, of course, for the money, but also because of the self sovereignty it gives us over our income. We get to choose when we trade, how we trade, etc. So don't give that up just because the excitable little monkey inside of you is saying, I want to get in, I want to get in, I'm not in a trade, it's not exciting, I'm bored, I'm bored. 
you need to quieten that monkey down and always understand that you have a choice and you need to be consciously making that choice all the time number two if you're not participating at a specific level then it's fine not to understand why anyone else is and to stay out of the market so this is where we have an area that we plan to buy or sell depending perhaps how we approach that level and the reaction that we get at that level however somewhere in the middle of those areas something starts to happen right we get a huge candle a massive volume influx some kind of big move and we don't know why that happened because we were not interested in participating at that level so we don't know why other people are and that's absolutely fine this is where FOMO kills people because we have a plan we're sitting there we're waiting for our plan to come to fruition for one of our levels to hit except instead of that we get all excited the chart does what it's designed to do and draws us into the market at a point that we don't understand we FOMO into a trade we have no idea what the target is we have no idea what the stop loss should be we have no idea why we've entered there and of course we lose the issue with trading is you can often do stupid things and still make money and this is a huge issue to overcome because there is a randomness to trading we can make stupid decisions and make really great amounts of money however i think all of us who have been trading for a while know that that absolutely isn't sustainable so what we want to do is have a sustainable approach that has an edge over the market over time and that's what we're going to be building out here once we understand that we can use all the various tools in our TA toolbox, not all of which will be relevant at the time. So we need to also, over time, develop an understanding of what's relevant and what isn't. I think for most people, technical analysis is a, a process of stripping away rather than adding. We want to find levels on the chart that we have high conviction or give us a trade if and when price reaches that area and we can keep our charts nice and clean. If a level does not give you a potential trade, if the price hits that level, there's no reason for it to be on your chart. Now it can be uh, hidden on your chart and we're gonna go through that during this lesson. However, it doesn't need to be visible on your chart because it's just a mess. Now, if you're listening to this video, I'm sure you've been through this and I absolutely have been through it myself. Paralysis by overanalysis. You've got a level on your chart. Let's just say a very simple support and resistance level. You're saying, if the price hits this level, I'm going to long. This is support. We're in an uptrend. I'm going to long it. Easy. So price starts to come down and you start to say, well, hang on, hang on a minute. Well, we've got a FIB level just below us. So maybe it's going there. But, you know, also we've got um, volume coming in and we've got a POC and we've got a TPO POC just below us and, 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 and. And in the end, you just miss your trade. You've talked yourself out of your trade. Or... The other thing is you do take your trade, but because you have all of these and, and, and things that are on your mind, you're saying, well, you know, it's looking a bit weak here. I don't know, it's not looking great. I think, you know, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to close it out. And then you've made a bad trade. So you're overmanaging your trade and overthinking your trade can be just as harmful as taking bad trades because often they amount to the same thing. Overmanaging, overthinking, taking bad trades really are all the same thing in the end. So this is part one. So some of this might be very familiar to many of you. I'm sure every single one of you, if you're watching this, has probably heard of at least or used perhaps extensively TradingView. But we are gonna go through TradingView in detail. Now, I understand that you might think I've used TradingView for years, I know what I'm doing. Let's just turn the video off. I totally understand that. If that's the case, you can have a look through the chapters, uh, which you'll find in the description, and find some things that maybe you haven't learned about trading view to make it more effective however i would recommend even if you watch it on double speed for example watching this video because i'm going to throw in as many tips and tricks about trading view as i can to get it set up and just like anybody going through any job we want to make sure our tools are ready effective and organized for the job at hand and trading view is going to be our main tool throughout this entire course now, personally, I'm a pro subscriber. I have whatever the highest level is because I want all of the functionality. And for me, I feel like, and of course, this is not financial advice, and I have no affiliation whatsoever to TradingView. 
it is one of the first things you should invest in in trading whether it's trading view or one of the alternatives i know in crypto almost everybody uses trading view however we're going to be doing this course based on a free account so that absolutely everybody as long as you have a computer and an internet connection you will be able to do everything that i explain here there will be some limitations and if that's the case i will mention that if you have a paid account you can do x y and z that you might not be able to do on the free account however i'm going to try to concentrate all of those things that we can do using the free account so first of all we're going to set up the look and the feel of the chart now as i say this is very individual and everyone throughout all of these steps should set it up however you feel most comfortable however i'm going to give you a setup that is very similar to my main setup but i feel is a really decent just general default setup for people to be using so first of all because we're going to be spending many 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 hours looking at the chart if you really uh, get into trading i feel it's best to have a dark color theme and i think the quicker you can get used to that the better it's just going to save your eyes now on top of this i would recommend for people to use blue blocking glasses blue light blocking glasses um, i've used various ones from like really pretty expensive ones to just whatever random chinese ones uh, the random Chinese ones are just as good as the expensive ones from my point of view and they cost literally I think the glasses I'm wearing right now cost me about ten dollars and I would also recommend getting the highest quality screen you can um, I'm somebody that never cared about the uh, TV that I have you know thinking about getting the very best quality on the TV I still don't even know what the best quality TV even is However, when I bought a 4K uh, Ultra HD screen, the difference is night and day, honestly. So if you have the budget, do invest in the best screen that you can. So we're gonna start off with a demonstration. I'm gonna switch to trading view and go through this with you step by step. Okay, now what you see in front of you is a brand new trading view. I've literally just registered for a free account. As you can see, uh, I still have the option of a trial, which you can do, but I would have to put in my credit card details, etc., which I'm not going to do because I'm already a pro subscriber. However, if you want to try TradingView for free, um, you can click this button here to put in your credit card and get 30 days of the pro uh, TradingView features. However, we're going to go through the setup. So first of all, we're just going to go to a chart. So we're going to click on chart here. We're going to see a lot of pop-ups here, uh, ads. Unfortunately, that's just part of the free account experience. Okay, and just to make you a little bit more familiar with us, we're just gonna type in BTC USD on the top left and we're gonna choose Binance. Just so at least we have a crypto asset in front of us. Okay, so first of all, we're going to click on the hamburger menu on the top left here. And we are going to click dark color theme. Okay, so now we're gonna have a chart that looks like this. And next thing we're gonna do is right click and go to the settings. And we're going to go to symbol and color now these are absolutely fine as they are i just like to have them a little lighter so i'm going to change my green to this one which is the third one down one two three here and i'm going to do that for all three of these one two three one two three and for this one i'm going to change it for to the third one up which might be the default one i think is very very slightly different just a little bit lighter especially on the green on your eyes and then we're going to click appearance so set up as it is i think is fine i think it's just pretty much uh solid black however i like to have a little bit of a gradient and you can play around with this just for the purposes of this video we're going to put this left gradient to the third one along you can see the lighter you get the more gradient that you get this one's just a little bit of a gradient just makes it nice and light um, easy to read so we're going to put this one a third along and we're going to put this one as the most black okay and the next thing we're going to do is remove these grid lines you can see the lines here going horizontally and vertically now i don't make the rules as i said however um, if you have grid lines on your chart no one's going to take your technical analysis seriously it is what it is as i said i don't make the rules so we're going to just set the opacity to zero and set the opacity to zero right over here. And now you can see that the background has removed um, all of the grid lines. Now the next thing we're gonna do is change the scales text, if it is not already the default, which it probably is, to this third one along. 
and also on the cross there. I like that one to be also the third one along. If the watermark shows on the background, you want to turn that off. It's just more mess on the chart. If you want to see what you're trading, you can see it right up here. There's no need for that to be on the chart. And then we're going to click OK. Now, the next thing we want to do is save the chart. And the quickest way for us to do this is just to click where it says unnamed up here right now. Or you can see it gives you an option for a shortcut. Just like most things is going to be Command S or Control S, depending if you're on Mac or PC. And click it. This means it's saving and when it has a little tick, that means the chart that you have right now is the saved version. Now, an important thing that we want to do is turn off autosave, which seems a little bit counterintuitive, I understand. However, uh, personally, and I see it on Twitter all of the time, uh, people get their charts deleted because they do something or they accidentally change something or they accidentally delete a bunch of stuff and then TradingView autosaves it and just basically gets rid of their chart so they've lost all of their TA. Now I don't want that to happen. I'm pretty used to and I do the same thing when I'm using a lot of different programs. I always turn off autosave. I'm used to just quickly saving uh, my work as I go along every time I change something that I want to save. Um, of course sometimes you'll forget but I think that's going to make less problems for you than the autosave. So do turn that off. Okay the next thing we want to do is to change the layout name because it's currently called unnamed which doesn't really mean anything. So I'm just going to call this main after clicking rename and save. And now you can see my layout is called main. Now that we've done that, we have something that resembles a workable setup. So what's next? Next thing we want to do is get our indicator templates set up. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a basic template that has volume in a different pane and has a basic session VWAP on it. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, get rid of this ad. We're going to come down here until our cursor turns into a hand symbol, as you can see. We're going to right click, we're going to click move to and new pane below. Now volume is in a separate pane to the candlesticks, which is perfect. However, it is huge. So sometimes you do really want to see the volume, right? So you can just drag it up as with most things. If you get over the dividing line, it becomes this arrow symbol. You can drag up and down, but I want it to be mostly pretty small. So I'm going to keep it around this size at the bottom of the screen. So now the next thing that we want to do is to add a VWAP. So we're going to click up here. We're going to type in VWAP. And we can see these ones are kind of like the built in ones on TradingView. So not ones that uh, users have made. If users have made them, we can see their usernames up here. These ones with no usernames, they're kind of like a default ones on TradingView. So we're going to click this one, volume weighted average price. And we can then click X to get out of that. And we do have a VWAP on the screen. However, it's very hard to see. You might be able to see this sort of green line here, but because we're on a daily chart and is a session or daily VWAP, we can't really see it. So we're gonna to switch to the 30 minute chart by clicking on the D up here and going to 30 minutes. So now we can go up to where it says VWAP up here and click this gear icon, which just like most other programs is gonna be the settings and open up the settings for the VWAP. And then on the style tab, over here. We do want the VWAP, but we're going to get rid of this upper bound, upper band, lower band, and the uh, band fill. And we're going to click OK. So now what we have is a basic template with volume in a separate pane and the VWAP here. So just a quick tip for you guys. If you double click on the main pane here, the volume will disappear. Basically what it's doing is making this main pane full screen. So I do tend to do that because I'm not looking at volume all the time. I do use volume, but I use uh, often in different ways. I'm not necessarily looking at trading view volume all that much. And if I do want volume to come back, I can just double click again and it will pop back. So same thing, if you double click the volume, it will make it full screen. So now we want to make this a saved template. So just to demonstrate this, we're gonna click on the squares up here. And we can see some default templates. These come built into TradingView. You can play around with those as you like. We're going to click on Save Indicator Template. We're going to call this one space dash space basic. And we're going to click Save. And if we go back up here and we click the little star next to basic, we can see that it becomes one of our saved templates. Now you could do the same with these default ones. And just so you can see, we can flip between the templates. 
And this one I believe is a MA, so moving average template. And this one is the basic one that we just set up. Now I'm gonna I'm going to remove that one because we don't need it. Now on basic plan, we can only save one custom template. However, on a paid plan, uh, I have about seven or eight templates. I use one almost all the time, but the other seven and eight I do want to check now and then. They have tools that I use rarely, but in specific situations I do want to look at. So it makes it really easy for me to just flip between them just by pressing a number and you can hover over and see what the template is called there. So of course you want to call it something that you remember. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at are time frames. So having your most used time frames on the menu bar can be a big time saver so that we can switch between them. Now, of course, it's up to you which time frames you use. I'm just going to put the ones that I use most of the time. These second ones are going to be unavailable to you on a free plan. However, you do have from one minute upwards, which I think for the vast, vast majority of people is going to be plenty enough. So we're going to put the one minute, the five minute, and we're just clicking the stars next to it, the 15 the 30, the one hour, the four hour, the day, the week, and the month. And if we get rid of the ad over here, we can also add custom ones here. So for example, if you wanted three days, you can just click three days and add. However, as you can see, this is only available in the pro plan. So not available for us right now on the free plan, however, Again, I think for the vast majority of people, that's absolutely fine. So now you can see that we have our most used or favorite timeframes up here in the menu bar. So nice and easy to switch between them. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is to get our favorite tools easily accessible to us in the main frame without having to always find them on this menu on the left. So this is really very personal. Um, it depends on which ones you want to have easily accessible, which ones you use the most often. However, I'm going to put the ones that I'm going to use a lot during this course on our favorite. So we're going to go here and we're going to click the star next to a few different symbols. So we're going to start off with this one here, the trend line. We're going to put on a ray. We're going to put on a horizontal ray. We're going to put on a parallel channel. And we're going to move down. We're going to put on our fib retracement trend based fib extension and a pitchfork then we want to put on our brush so we can use that if we wish to um, our and here we're going to put on our text and this one i'm not going to put anything for now this one we're going to put on our i like to put this one first fixed range volume profile and then our long and short positions and I do like to use this one too so these are our favorites now and as you can see we can easily drag this around because sometimes it'll be in the middle of your chart so I like to leave it somewhere close to the bottom for example and you can just drag it around as you like on the chart okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a trend line and we're going to click it now a quick tip for you guys it's very hard to get a straight trend line you can see here I can line it up so I'm looking for the uh, crosshairs to line up perfectly with the trend line it can be pretty fiddly if you just hold down shift it will make the trend line perfectly straight so we can go straight up if we're close to being up it will make it go uh, perfectly vertical if you're close to being horizontal it'll make it go perfectly horizontal so we're going to click again and now we have a perfectly horizontal trend line so the next thing we're going to do is set up some templates on our tools. So we're going to double click on the trend line and that's going to bring up the settings. And we're going to choose the color here and we're going to change it to white. And we're going to change the thickness to the third one along. And now we're going to go down to this bottom left where it says template. We're going to click on the arrow and we're going to click save as. And we're going to call it basic and we are going to save and click OK. So now we have this white trend line set up as a basic template. The next thing we're going to do is double click on it again. We're going to change the color to pink. Let's make it a little bit of a lighter pink. And we're going to then save this as, save as pink. And we're going to click OK. So now we have two templates. We have a basic and a pink. 
So if we're drawing a trend line and we want to switch between the templates, we can just right click template and change basic or pink. Now this is obviously just a very basic demonstration. However, this can be done uh, to set up very complex and very, very different templates uh, on all of the tools. So we're going to be going through setting up templates as we go through the tools and we're going to use exactly the same method. However, the setup may be different. So as we go through the tools, we're going to go through that step by step. So I cleared up our chart, got rid of that trend line, and what we're going to look at next is the object tree, which I believe to be a hugely underutilized tool on TradingView, absolutely essential to this method that we're teaching here, the Confluence Trading. So we're going to go through that step by step. First thing to access the object tree, you're going to click the object tree symbol down here, and it's going to open up this object tree. So here you can see that we have the asset that we're looking at, our uh, VWAP and the volume. We don't need to do anything with those because we want those to be on our chart. And the next thing we're going to do is draw a trend line. So we're going to select the trend line tool and draw it. And we're just going to make that a pink trend line by right clicking and clicking pink. Now the next thing that we want to do is have another trend line. So the easiest way to do this is to hover over it and click it. So you can see it's selected now because we can see this highlighted and the two balls on the left and the right means that this is selected. We're going to hold down command on a Mac or control on a Windows PC and we're going to just drag it and it's going to copy the trend line over and we're going to right click this one and we're going to make that into a basic trend line. So what we have now is one pink trend line and one basic trend line. So what we can see over here in the object tree is that we have two trend lines and we can turn them on and off. So what we want to do is to label them, which will help us later to identify what these trend lines are. Now in this case, we're just going to give them very, very basic labels just to demonstrate. So first of all, we can select, we can just hover over so it becomes a hand or we can click it so that it remains highlighted in the object tree. So we know that this trend line is this one in the object tree. So we're going to right click it here. We're going to rename it pink. And then of course we know this one is the other trend line but just to demonstrate we're going to click it we're going to see it highlighted here we're going to right click rename and we're going to call it basic so now we have our two trend lines in the object tree and what we want to do next is to group them together so we're going to click on this one and no matter how many you have you can click on the first one hold down shift click on the last one of course here we only have two right click and choose create a group of drawings that will then create a group It's going to be called group one because this is the first group that we have we're going to rename it and we're going to call it trend lines now we can see that we can collapse the folder just to keep it very neat in the object tree and we can also turn it on and off as we need it so it gives us a basic folder in the object tree that we can then build upon as we start to build out our confluence tools on the chart. So now we want to save our chart because we put some technical analysis on it and move on to the next step. So the next thing we're going to do is to make the watch list into something that we can actually use. So go back to the watch list, which is this icon up here. And this is the default one that is given to us uh, when we sign up for TradingView. The way you use your watch list is going to be incredibly individual depending on what assets you're trading, how you want to categorize them, how you want to see them on the chart. However, just to demonstrate, I'm going to give you a very, very basic setup and then you can then play around with it to get it to your liking. The first thing we have all of this information on the bottom of the watch list that I have no interest in seeing whatsoever. So I'm going to get to this dividing line till I get these arrows and I'm going to drag this down to make it as small as possible. So it's gonna show the current asset that we have on our chart, which is BTC USDT, which is fine. Next, we're going to select all of the data on the current watch list. So we're gonna click on this first uh, bar, which is indices, and we're going to hold shift and down to the bottom, click the bottom one, so everything is highlighted. We're going to then click delete on our keyboard. It's gonna ask us, do we really want to delete? Yes, we do, thank you very much. And we are then left with an absolutely clear watch list. So just for demonstration purposes, we're going to add just two different assets. So first we're going to click this plus up here. We're going to type in BTC USDT and we're going to use this one from Binance. We're going to click this blue 
plus. And then we're also going to click this BTC USDT perpetual contract from Binance. We're going to click the blue plus and then we can close the search here. So now we have two BTC USDTs in our watch list. However, it is difficult for us to differentiate between them. We can hover over them and then just wait. And also that's a little bit buggy. Eventually it'll come up and tell you which one it is. Well, if we're trying to switch between them quickly, that is not useful at all. So what we want to do now is separate them out. So we're going to do that by right clicking the first one and we're going to click add section. And we're going to do the same thing on the second one and we're going to right click and click add section. So this first section is our BTC USDT spot on Binance and we can just hover over and wait for it to come up to just to double check and we can see there that that's correct. So we're going to right click where it says section one. We're going to rename this spot. And here we have BTC USDT perpetual contract on Bybit. And so we're going to right click section two and we're going to call this one perp. So now we have our watch list very basically separated by spot and perp with two different pairs on it from two different exchanges. Now there are many, many, many things you can do with a watch list. Just to go through some of the basics, you can have different lists. So you can create new lists. For example, I have a TradFi list that I don't trade. However, I may want to look at the DXY or the SPX, for example, uh, but I don't want it on my watch list all the time. So I can just quickly click on that list and bring up all of the assets that I've added to it. You can also tag them with different colors and then you can filter by colors here. So you might want to separate, for example, your perps, your spot or trades that you're currently in, trades that you're waiting for an entry, trades that you set limit orders for, etc. So that way you can really, really easily uh, manage your trades day to day. So that's something I do. My watch list is a living thing. Um, I will change it around, especially if I'm trading a lot of alts. I will have ones that I have currently open, ones that I'm looking for an entry, ones that I'm looking for a take profit, etc. So I, when I come to my chart to do my TA, I can just very quickly switch between them without having to worry about what positions I'm in, for example. Now, the next thing we want to do is look at the alerts. So alerts can be used in many, many different ways, some of which can be quite complex. However, we're going to look at the basic alert setup and the way you can set alerts is you can go to the price that you want to set an alert at and you can right click and click add alert. The way I like to do it is to get as close as I can to the price. For example, if I want to alert, if we take out this high, I can't get perfectly on the price here. So I'm going to hover over and I can see that the high is at 36675.63, which I can see up here. Once I hover over, I can say the H, that's the high there. And I'm going to so I'm going to get relatively close to it. I'm going to click the plus sign and then I'm going to click add alert. And then it's going to bring this alert up for me. I can double click on the line and I'm just going to change this to the exact value that I wanted, which was 6675.63. And I only want it to come up one time. So only to alert me once, not every time that the price passes that uh, price point. And one of the important things I like to put on is to play a sound and then I like to usually have it on five seconds. So this way um, I'm much less likely to miss it because it's going to play a sound and that sound means get your chart, open the chart up, have a look what's going on. And then you can click save. Now of course you can put some notes in here, for example, uh, key resistance, etc. whatever notes that you want to pop up when the price crosses that line and then click save. So talking about keeping your chart clean, this is all well and good. I like to know that I have an, uh, an alert here. Now, of course, you can have a look here at the alerts that you have. However, I want to just be able to see this little arrow without this huge line. So I'm going to right click on the line and take off extend alert lines. So now it just gives me this little arrow. So I know there's an alert there. If I can't quite remember why I put an alert there, I can always double click it have a look at my notes and remind myself or you can do it through this list but I do tend to do that more rarely than just looking here and reminding myself oh yeah okay that's a key resistance perhaps I'm looking for a short there for example 
So now in a very basic sense, we have a good default template for us to work from. We understand object trees. We understand the alerts. We understand how to create templates uh, within our different tools. And then this gives us a basis for us to start to build our technical analysis out from. So this is the conclusion of this video. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at the absolute cornerstone of technical analysis, which are high time frame levels. And we're gonna go through in detail how why and where to mark these levels and what they might mean when the price trades into them. So I appreciate you watching this video. Please do us a favor and like, comment in the video. I really appreciate it if you retweeted my tweet and just give this a little bit of exposure. As with everything in Mindjack, this is 100% free of charge. And if you're not already in it, please join the free Mindjack Discord. It is an amazing group. There are some really incredible traders in there. I find it incredibly useful for me to share my ideas, share my setups, and to get people's feedback on it. Now, I think for everybody, you want to get to a point in your trading where you don't let other people's analysis influence you, or especially not to take their analysis and change your own setups. However, it does give you some extra confluence, and that's really what we're building out here, that what you're looking at is right, or perhaps that you've missed something that you can then go and review your own setup and bring into it to get a more effective trade. So I hope to see you guys on Twitter. I hope to see you guys in the Discord, and look out for part two coming soon. Mm -hmm.